Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today we're going to talk about the delicate subject of space poop. And the reason we're going to talk about it is because NASA has issued a challenge via the Hero X website. Now, Hero X is kind of like a reverse crowdfunding site where uh, an entity, an organization, will put up a prize, in this case $30,000, and then invite people to come up with suggestions for how to deal with the problem with the winner basically getting the prize money. So NASA is using this site to ask if anybody out there in the world has a better idea of how to deal with poop in spacesuits. Their blurb actually says, In space, no one can hear you flush. This is because in space there are no toilets. While you may go about your life mostly unaffected by this, it is more of a challenge for our brave astronauts in their spacesuits. After all, when you gotta go, you gotta go, and sometimes you gotta go in total vacuum. Now, actually, there are high-tech toilets on the space station, but the spacecraft that are traveling to the space station and returning from the space station, they don't really have that option. Uh, during launch and re-entry, the crew has to be in spacesuits for safety reasons. And, you know, if you're on an EVA, you could be in a suit for 10 hours or more. And if there was something that really went wrong, there are emergency situations which could find astronauts wearing a spacesuit for six days or longer. Now, naturally, astronauts are the best of the best. They're amazing people, but when they're wearing spacesuits, they're basically wearing adult diapers. They're technically called maximum absorbency garments, but they're basically the same thing as a baby's diaper. They have sodium polyacrylate, which is a chemical that can absorb something like 300 times its weight in water. And I have to say that having been a father that has taken care of two babies, I am grateful to whoever came up with this technology. Anyway, the astronauts can make use of this to keep themselves comfortable on long spacewalks. Although I do hear that astronauts in general prefer to hold it in and wait until they get back to the facilities on board the spacecraft. But if you were stuck in a spacesuit for six days, and yes, you did end up doing number twos, then, well, this wouldn't really help you that much because the uh, product would remain in contact with your skin and would irritate it quite terribly. And so NASA has specified that they're looking for a system inside a spacesuit that collects human waste for up to 144 hours and routes it away from the body without the use of the hands. That does indeed seem like an incredibly difficult problem, and I am really interested to see what other people in the world come up with. But while I've got you all here, let's talk about the whole history of being and pooping in space. Now, as far as I know, the first person to go and do his business in a spacesuit was Alan Shepard, although, to be fair, he was still on the ground. You see, his Mercury 7 flight was supposed to be a short 15-minute suborbital hop. He uh, was placed in the capsule about 5.30. They expected to launch a couple of hours later, and then problems happened, and problems kept happening, and the launch kept getting delayed. And eventually he realized, oh, I'm going to have to do my business here. He did request permission to leave the capsule to deal with this particular problem. However, on this mission, the hatch was literally bolted shut and it would take them a long time to get it open. So, after some discussion with Mission Control, they turned off the electrodes in his suit and uh, he let rip. But the first person to actually do the business in space would be German Titov in Vostok 2. Now, on his mission, it was going to be a 24-hour mission, and at 6.30 p.m. Moscow time on August the 6th, 1961, German Tidov got to go where no man had gone before. I don't actually have much details for the Soviet space program on what they did. However, because NASA is a US government entity and all their documents are in the public domain, there's a whole lot of detail like, way more detail than you ever want to know about what the Apollo astronauts had to do. And I'm very specifically talking about the problem of going poop. So, on the Apollo missions, they were supplied with the latest in technology. They had plastic bags with special uh, adhesive seals. And the idea was you would stick this onto your butt around the important 
pieces to provide a seal and stop anything floating back out. These were affectionately known as ass gaskets by the crew. Now that might sound pretty nasty to some of you, but it gets worse. You see, in space, it's very difficult for an astronaut to achieve separation from your waist without the assistance of gravity. So because of this, the Apollo bags contained, or they had a little narrow pocket called a finger cot. It's basically something you could push your finger through and it would still be protected by the, the bag. And you could then achieve separation from the material manually. And you would, of course, use this to push the poop into the bottom of the bag because the next thing you would have to do is once you had finished, you would have to remove this very carefully without letting any of the contents escape into the cabin. And indeed, declassified transcripts from Apollo 10 allow you to relive that moment when the crew came face to face with free floating feces. Anyway, assuming that you did actually manage to keep everything in the bag, the next thing you had to worry about was the fact that it contains a large amount of biologically active bacteria and they tend to produce, uh, they tend to continue to metabolize any uh, nutrients in there and produce waste gases. So you didn't want the bag kind of inflating up. So to deal with that, you wanted to mix in a a packet of germicide into the bag and then seal the bag. The problem is that in zero G, liquids don't tend to mix naturally. So you had to force the mixing to make sure they were thoroughly mixed. And the method that was used was again, manual manipulation with the hands. Yes, after going poop in a bag, you had to massage your own still warm poop with your hands. Uh, Should I point out that these bags were also made of clear plastic, so nothing was left to the imagination. Not only could you feel it, but you could see it. Anyway, apparently enough astronauts found this experience so unpleasant that by the time the space shuttles were flying with their high-tech vacuum-driven toilets, the toilet was declared a piece of mission-critical equipment such that if it broke and the prospect of using Apollo bags raised its ugly head, they were allowed to scrub the whole mission and return to the Earth as soon as possible. And back in November 1989, the prospect of a mission being ended by a toilet failure almost happened. During STS-33, a classified DOD mission, Frederick Gregory woke up one morning and headed to the bathroom to, well, squeeze out his captain's log. Now, I won't go into the exact details of the operation of this, but... One of the things about the space shuttle toilet is that the solid waste was taken into an area where a valve could be opened to expose it to space. This meant that it was like an airlock for poop. However, due to a malfunction during this top secret operation, both airlock valves ended up being open. And as a result, the air from the shuttle started rushing out, impeded only by the commander's buttocks. This, of course, could lead to depressurization of the crew cabin of the space shuttle and the potential asphyxiation of the crew. Leadership was needed. Unfortunately, the crew's leader was still strapped to the toilet. The decreasing atmospheric pressure activated emergency systems. Alarms went off and the environment control system began to replenish the cabin's atmosphere from tanks of liquid oxygen and nitrogen, which were in the cargo hold. And as it happens, the vents that supply this gas are positioned directly above the toilet. So in addition to having gale force winds blowing between his legs, he was having arctic winds blowing down on him as the cabin atmosphere was replenished by gases at sub-zero temperatures. Thankfully, mission specialist Story Musgrave was able to get to the scene on time, and together they managed to wrestle the valve closed and save the day. But with the one toilet out of commission, the crew were faced with the prospect of scrubbing the mission and returning home to a place where toilets are rather more mundane. But the engineers, of course, at Mission Control were resourceful enough to come up with an alternative way to make the toilet valves actuate, and the mission was saved. So you see, going poop in space is not only vastly more difficult than on Earth, it's also potentially deadly.
And to that end, I'm fascinated to see what kind of solutions the public comes up with in this latest crowd campaign. And hopefully the instructions will be a lot similar than those used on the set for 2001 A Space Odyssey. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.